So now we're going to do the soft assertion. We'll discuss how we can able to achieve it. You know, what is the reason why we require the soft assertion? Because as you can see, there are so many assertions that we have got over here. We have an expect for the URL and we also have an expect for the visibility of the element for the category. We have a few more expects here and we have expects here, here, here and here. And you know what? If any one of the assertion fails, let's say the first assertion of our test fails. I'm just going to add an uh, colon there and then if I just try running this test you will notice that the test is eventually going to fail even in the first assertions that you are seeing over here you see that it is keep waiting there and the test has got failed it's going to tell you that you know what the expected string is not what you are looking for so that is correct well because we have a wrong string there well in those cases you can see that the test is not very very helpful because our first step itself has got failed so how do I get around this problem? Well, if you think this is one of the use cases that you have faced in your previous organizations or in your previous test or your current test, then the answer is already there in the playwright using soft assertion. So the soft assertion is something not new in playwright. Soft assertion is already there in JUnit and also available in other testing frameworks. And this framework, which is the expect library, also have the soft assertion. The, all you need to do is you just have to put dot and then put a soft method. There we go. That's going to do a soft assertion for you. So you can keep putting the soft assertion in all the assertions that you are doing over here. Something like this. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it in all the places. Something like this. And probably not everywhere. I'm just going to stop it over here. So you can see that I have put a soft assertion one, two, three, four places. So until here, the code is going to work without any problem. So even if there is any assertion failure, the test should execute. It shouldn't be stopping you from executing the other lines of code. But the test runner is going to report you the test failure at the end of the execution. So you will see what I really mean. So let's say if I'm going to put the same single quote here, and then I'm going to go and modify the data target a bit. So I'm going to say the, maybe data targets, who cares? And then I'm also going to remove the ID from garden to garden like that. Uh, so these are the failures that I have made in my test. And I wanted the test to be still executed. I don't want the test to be fully failing. And now let's say if I run this test, what's going to happen? You see that it is waiting there on that line, but it has executed there. And it is again waiting for that particular uh, control and it's still waiting. And you see that that executed as well. And the whole test has executed without any problem. But now it is starting to report as three errors. You see that the to have URL has got something wrong. Similarly, to have attribute is also wrong. And to have ID is also wrong. So it is telling us all these problems at the end of the test execution. You'll also see that this is going to start making more sense while we try running it from the command line. So let me try running the same test using the npx test. If you remember, we executed in our earlier videos. So you see that the test actually executed and they all got failed, which is OK. And it also tells you that these are the failures which is happening. But you also notice that the test actually executed without any problem until the end of the execution. It didn't stop in the first step. rather. It keep executed everywhere. And you'll also notice that while it runs, it is waiting for a certain time frame. Like there is an expect to have an URL and there's a timeout of 5000 milliseconds. So where is this 5000 milliseconds is really coming up? Why is this failure of the expect is still waiting for a timeout to happen and it is keep running it somewhere? Remember, in our last lecture, while we were talking about the playwright configuration a bit, I mean, we discussed, we didn't really discuss a lot, but we really discussed a bit about the configuration. And there is this expect libraries configuration over here, which has got a timeout of 5000 milliseconds. That's the reason it is actually waiting for you, like until that particular condition has been met. So if I make this to probably 1000, and now if I try executing it, you will notice that the failure is going to be a bit more faster. Maybe the failure is going to be even more for some other uh, unexpected failures as well because you know what the thousand is very very less the polling time will be much lesser during that assertion but let's see how this test execution is going to be so you can see that the test is already trying to complete here 
it is not very slow it's already completed and now if we go back to our test over here in the report you see that it is waiting for 1000 milliseconds this time not the 5000 milliseconds it was waiting before so this is how the playwright test runner is going to control and that's exactly what is happening while we run from the test runner of the playwright because it is still going to use this playwright test config for us behind the scene so that's about the soft assertion operation and hope it's starting to make more sense about how you could able to do the assertions